Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Home Service Success TV. I'm your host, Stephen Christopher, and I got an awesome guest for us today. I got Ryan Williams with 128 Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electric. They're serving the greater Boston area. Ryan, welcome to the show, man. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, doing great, man. Absolutely. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to share a couple tips on what you've learned uh, over the course of business. Sure, so sure. Just, no just so everybody kind of has an idea, you know, tell us a little bit about your company, what you guys do, you know, whatever you want to share. Sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, as you said, we serve the greater Boston area and we've been doing so for now 25 years coming this May, so we're really proud of that. Uh, we specialize in residential service and installation. So, all those demand services that customers are looking for every single day, no heats, no hot waters, no air conditioning, all those items, uh, that's what we're built for. And, awesome. Uh, and tell me a little bit about how you got in the business. Sure. Well, like uh, like most young people in the trade, you know, your your family is typically a large influence, right? And so, uh, I mean, my father is the master plumber uh, of this company, and you know, growing up, you know, you know uh, out in the trade, out in the trenches, you know, uh, all through high school, everything like that. And uh, I did go to college and everything like that, and never knew if I was going to hundred percent stick in this industry, but you know, uh, when everything was all said and done and all the books were closed, you know, I kind of had my heart set on uh, being able to do something a little bit differently in this industry. So here I am. Awesome, man. Well, that's, that's kind of a great lead in statement to a question of a little bit more in depth of, you know, why do you do what you do? I mean, what, you know, what do you love about this industry and what you're doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting question because you can go on so many, you know, different levels, you know, and, uh, you know, I think the traditional answer to that is I love working with my hands. I love being in the trade, you know, kind of love seeing the fruit of my labor type of thing. And, you know, for me, not actually being out turning wrenches every day in the field, you know, what for me really uh, brings a lot of self-gratification is being able to serve the community. And I say that in a way because I feel as though, and it is underserved, you know, consumers out there are underserved by our industry. And I believe that all the stereotypes that are out there with what contractors bring, we like to do the complete opposite of that. That's cool, man. So um, I, have a, I have a little bit more questioning down this path sure. because we, we hear about this. Well, yeah, anyway, I have more questions for a specific reason. So, um, you know, you're relatively young, um, you're running a successful company. And when you first got into this, was it about something a little bit different? Like when you were first getting into it and looking at it, was it like, oh, cool, like, yeah, this could be a very profitable future for me and my family. And if it was like that in the beginning, was there a, kind of a moment or a time when you noticed it to start to switch to service as opposed to, hey, this could be my profitable future? Or was maybe that not the case at all with you? No, I mean, I definitely think, you know, a lot of the old school mentality, like I said, is, you know, work with your hands till you're 65. And uh, that's what a plumber does. And that's the mentality that I actually had for a very long time until uh, after I got out of school and started working in the business day to day, I realized that there was something more. Once you kind of self start educating yourself a little bit about what this industry can deliver out there to the market, you kind of you know, have a, a, sh uh, a shift in mindset, if you will, on, you know, how you can potentially scale your service. And that's really what we've been focusing on. Awesome, man. I think that's a great message for some of the, the you know, the younger in the next generation that are doing what you're doing for them to, for them to pay attention to that, that, you know, it, it is, it feels great to do this thing called service and help. And I think as you and your company have demonstrated, obviously you guys are doing very well, that the, the success easily follows that. Yeah, it's no mystery. It's, you know, it's hard work, pay attention, take care of other people. You know, that's, it's all basic fundamentals, you know. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, um, give me, uh, you know, you guys have grown very quickly. You know, you're, you're obviously, like I said, a very successful company. Um, what's maybe like one, uh, the top one or two things that, you maybe it is like your expertise or something that you've paid a lot of attention to that's that's helped you guys grow so quickly and become successful. Can I can I show you something? Yeah. Okay, let me show you this real quick. All right. Well, let me tell you, can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. All right. So 
what I realized is when I first came into the business, I, uh, myself, and I'm sure many others have had countless, countless terrible experiences with hiring the wrong person. And I've made that mistake. I've had many of failures there. And it was in, it was in 2014 when, you know, my commitment to myself was that I'm going to hire differently. And I needed to make sure that the people that were coming into my business, their core values were aligned with mine. And that's when things just started to take off. And to making that commitment to be able to not hire impulsively, but to be able to hire the right person at the, at the right time for long-term growth is when things really started to gel together. Yeah, that, so that's something that we haven't really talked about yet, or we haven't, you know, nobody's brought this up in an interview, which is hiring. I mean, yeah. being so involved in this industry, you know, with what I do in the industry, I hear a lot about what's going on, what are people's pain points, and mm -hmm. the whole thing of hiring and finding people constantly comes up as like, you know, at least the top one, two, or three things. But it sounds yeah. like you've, so you made a conscious effort Mm -hmm. uh, to start changing the way that you were hiring. And now after 2014, when that happened, you've started to experience even greater success with that. It, that's all I'm hearing that correctly. A hundred percent. You know, it's an amazing thing. You know, when, when you have a, a, a particular culture that you've developed, like-minded people, it's like a magnet, you know, like like-minded mm -hmm. people get, start getting attracted to it. And that's, and that's what's happened. So, so in, in my business, we don't bat a thousand at everything that we do. We definitely make mistakes, but there's one thing that I can hang my hat on is that I will put my team up against anybody from the technicians into the, in the field to the office staff. You can't beat me. And that's the, and that's the one thing that I will hang my hat on. And I can sleep very well at night knowing that we have a lot of like-minded people underneath this roof. that are all moving the needle in the right direction. You know? that's that's awesome, man. And I love, I love the fact that you're doing this interview right now in front of your team and they can hear you. And you know, it, it's not like, you know, it's not like anybody in the background, it, it's not like anybody in the background is, is turning around looking like, you know, like, what is this guy talking about? He's absolutely yeah. full of shit. I mean, you know, you can tell they're fully, I mean, what you're saying is hundred percent true. That's, right. that's really cool. I mean, that, that's, that's what shows great pride of ownership and what you've uh, created. Um, so one of the things I heard you say is, you know, you created this culture and now that culture starts to act like a magnet and then sure. started to get more granular into hiring. So was one of your first steps in this whole, you know, hiring and attracting the right people, it was, sounds like it was creating good culture, right? Consistent culture? Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And it kind of forms itself, you know, and it can easily disform itself. Right? <laughs> so like, you know, I've experienced the complete opposite of it, but you know, until you really see it happen and you make that commitment, it's really tough to believe that. It's like, man, I keep hitting the same wall over and over, and then all of a sudden you start getting the right people in the right seat and everything just kind of blends together. Uh, so it took a while to get there. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, but uh, just like anything else, you know, I had to commit to it. And I remember the day I sat down in my office and I had the same – BS conversation with the same type of guy and he walked in and walked out, man, I'm not, there's no good guys out there. And I remember that time and I said, my commitment in 2014 is going to be on recruiting and changing my entire approach. So I stepped back from my process. I remember this day I got in front of my computer and I wrote all these questions down, all these interview questions about things that spoke to my core values. And I use that, those same exact questions in my interview today. And this is the crazy thing is that I, like I said, my team, not only personally, morally, professionally, and mechanically are they top notch, but in, in my interview questions, not one question says, how does a furnace work? How fast can you spin that wrench? Not one of those questions is even in there. It's all questions like, uh, explain to me a time in your life that you've gone above and beyond for somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're kind of questions like that and they get people thinking. And here's the thing that I can say, regardless, uh, people have given me a hard time because some of my interviewing has been a little bit too long. And they say, man, why, why do you interview that guy so long? And this, that, and the other. And I say, well, two reasons, all right? Num number one, 
if he's not the right guy for us, all right, uh, he knows 10 other people that might be the right person, okay? So when he leaves these doors, the image of our company is going to resonate out there in the market. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell the guys that don't belong here, the guys whose core values don't match with us, don't bother coming, and only A players start rolling in the door, you know? And secondly, our industry, like I said before, our consumers are underserved, but also uh, okay. our, the people that are working in this industry are also underserved. Mm-hmm. So I take that, I take that time to, to build back the integrity that we're missing in our trade and to be able to kind of raise the bar a little bit and to say maybe a guy that might be, you know, at, like playing at level three right now, at least try to get him thinking at level seven. Maybe it's with somebody else, but that will benefit us in the long run. So that's how we roll with that. That's really cool, man. I, I, you know, I heard something you said that I've, I've never heard anybody say before. <laughs> and basically, at least how I, how I took it in my notes was serve your people. Yeah. Serve your people internally, just like you're focused on serving your customers externally. Um, and that's a really cool way to think about it that I, I think a lot of people do miss. You know, I think they, they run their good people too hard to make up for the, the staff that isn't that great. Um, and they're just kind of trying to hire anybody to fill seats. You know, they're just worried about getting butts in seats. Um, so going back to kind of your, your interview process, right? Um, yeah. We're not going to give away all of your secrets because why would we? But let's give some, let's give some cool actionable stuff. Um, when we were talking a couple minutes before the interview started, you know, you mentioned a little bit about your interview process and share with me kind of the differences between either what you used to do and what you do now, or like what you see kind of average in the industry for like how people are interviewing. Well, yeah. So first and foremost, I know everyone can relate to, I need to get a truck on the road and I need a butt in a seat. All right. That's like the completely backwards approach, right? You're always recruiting all the time and you're always looking for like-minded people to be part of your industry because turnover is inevitable and it's, I don't care what industry you're in. It happens. I mean, we've had people, not you know, leave our company, not because it's not the right place, but because of, you know, family things and medical things and career changes and their spouse's world and everything like that. So, um, being able to, to take the time to interview somebody, you know, properly is, is key. And so it has to happen all the time. Hmm. So one thing, one mistake that I used to make all the time was someone would walk in the door and they would go right to my chair and I would start talking to them right away. When you do that, you don't create a separation and uh, a time for that candidate to absorb this process they're about to partake in. So I don't care if you've been plumbing for 30, 35 years or you've been plumbing for one year, you still come into the same seat, fill out the same application, just like everybody else, and you follow the same exact process. Mm-hmm. You know? That's great, man. And, uh, and then so, you know, a lot of people will interview somebody for 10, 15, 30 minutes, and they're th- I think they're looking at it through that lens of like, holy cow, they're thinking about the truck in the back that's empty, and they're like, all right, can this guy fill that right now? Um, right. And I love what I'm hearing you say about like, you know, a higher, basically higher, slow, hire the right person. It'll save you a lot of time and money in the long run. So you get somebody in to do an interview. Are you, you know, like I said, without giving away all your awesome secrets, you know, how long is your interview process? Is it 10 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? Is it, is it once? Is it? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I usually know within the first five minutes if they're the right fit for us or not. All right. But what you got to understand is that, that next 30 to 40 minutes, right? If that person is the right person is the most influential time that guy is going to have in their career here because I just set the tone and the expectation right during the interview, not after they're hired and 90 days in, you know, I set the tone right then. Here's our core values. Here's how we operate. You you know, are you, are you ready to perform like this? X, Y, Z across the board. I spend the time then to do it. You know, if someone is completely not, you know, uh, the right fit, I will definitely tone that down for obviously for, you know, time saving purposes, but you know, spend spend the time and and hammer that hammer, hammer, hammer expectations early. Yeah. I I love that, man. I mean, that's the most, uh, 
uh, malleable they're going to be is when they're in there in that initial interview. So I love that you're taking the time to set up the expectations of the company, the core, you know, came back to core values, very far, yes. first part of our conversation. Right. And you're using that interview to ask those questions more about them. Um, and you know, what is their, what is their personality and what do they believe in and their morals and all that kind of stuff. Um, awesome, man. So cool. Well, uh, Hey, I really appreciate you sharing some great stuff about, you know, what you guys are doing there. Um, give us, a, give us uh, some information about your company. You know, where can we find you online? Um, how can people contact you? Uh, all that kind of good stuff if they, if they have additional questions for you. Sure. Uh, well, I'll, we'll start with the domain. The domain is call128.com, uh, C-A-L-L-128.com. And if anybody wants to reach me directly, happy to uh, chat and share. And that's it's all about serving others, just like you said. So uh, Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at call128.com is, is a fantastic way to reach out. So, Awesome, man. Cool. Well, you know, here we have, uh, again, Ryan Williams from 128 Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electric. Thanks for dropping some awesome knowledge on us today. Just as a real quick recap of the things that I got on my notes from the call, um, Hiring questions, you know, asking really good questions, not just about what they do in the field and, you know, what their experience in the specific trade is, but like get to know these people a little bit, you know, do they fit the core values? Um, core values. I mean, we hit on that a couple times within this interview. So if, if you don't know what your core values are and it's something you know you need to figure out, maybe Ryan's a great person to reach out to to figure out how they did that. But that's a really crucial part of you know, business is knowing what your core values is, especially when it comes to, to hiring. Um, one of the coolest things that I've ever heard anybody say, and I've never heard it said, said this way is serve your people, um, like you would serve your customers. And I don't know, maybe I'm paraphrasing a little bit based on the way you said it, but that's how we're going to say it now. Serve your people internally, just like you would serve your customers. Take it. And from a recruiting standpoint, always be recruiting. You know, even if you're a, a, a one person or two person company, like just always be looking for those, those people that will, that will be able to help you grow and be a right fit so that you're never just trying to put a butt in a seat. Cause as Ryan talked to us about us or talked to us about today, um, you know, when he started making those changes back in 2014, it made a huge difference in their business. So um, anyway, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with Ryan Williams from 128 and myself. Um, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, let us know and feel free to hit Ryan up too. Thanks so much. Have an amazing rest of your day.